It's Ace Boogie. I'm hanging in the big chair with Blair. Yeah. Can't get Welcome to the Big Chair with Blair. I am your host, Blair Moon, and today my guest is Ace Boogie. With no hoodie. Alright, <laughs> All right, so uh, can you kind of like explain kind of who you are to the people at home? Explain who I am, alright. Um, I'm too much of a nice guy. I'm the nice guy of the room. Um, let's see, I graduated from Cass Tech, went to Wayne State for like two years, dropped out, did all that. Um, obviously I make music. Uh, let's see, what else do I do? Um, I don't work at all. I don't do that. We don't do those type of things around here, you know? Alright. Um, let's see. Why not? I'd rather sleep. I feel it. <laughs> I'd rather be asleep. Um, other than that... So uh, no job? No. Other than that, I just like to be uh, creative and whatnot. In a, little, in a little different process. Why'd you drop out? Um, when, I, when I first went to school, at first I was, I was a pre-med major. Um, it got boring like a year and a half in. Like I started skipping classes. I started not going to my APM government class. Because like, it didn't end until like 10. So I'm like, that's one class I'm not going to, dropped it. And then the whole little pre-med thing just got boring. Like, of course, of course I wanted to be pre-med at first for like kids. I got a bunch of cousins, a bunch of baby cousins. My friends got kids. So it's like, and they all love me. I'm, I'm the uncle. I'm, I'm the drunk uncle at functions. Drunk know? uncle at functions. So after that, I switched majors. I went over to uh, broadcast journalism. And I was taking classes like video editing, uh, sound engineering, and it was just like, I felt like I was paying money for something that ain't going to be utilized. And like, not utilized in the real world, but it's not like, you can go out and find this job for real. So it's like, All right. but it did help me with, with my creative process and learning who I wanted to be. All right. So all that dropping out helped. Just don't drop out if you don't have a plan. So, getting into the music, so what inspired you to chase after your passion for music? Um, I started music in 7th and 8th grade. I always wanted to know like how music is made. So it's like I had a CD player I carry around in my book bag. And I hear the song and I'd be like, how, how did this get on this little CD? Like, because you just grew up and you you see that people put music out and it's automatically in a CD. Like, right. I know how to burn CDs. But it's like, how they get the, the skits, the music, the animations and stuff like that. So it's like, it made my curiosity higher than what it was. And then I like music as a whole. So, in eighth grade, me and like two other people, we started a group and we were beefing with people who actually made music. Like... We had, had fights in like the, the during recess. We had like rap battles and stuff in the parking lot. And then we started like semi recording on like Windows computer. Like mm -hmm. the, you know, the interaction mic. Like they had the, uh, it was like mic stand like this, excuse me. And it had like the long mic that came out to where you talk to people over FaceTime. Okay. We was recording on that. And then it's just like I was the only one who stuck with it because, uh, I felt like I was the only one who really wanted to take it serious. Right. So, pretty much that, that just grew into a curiosity of how to make music. And I started doing spoken word. And that's, that's really how I got started doing spoken word. I had like three spoken word songs. All right, so where did the name Ace Boogie come from? Two occasions. Um, when I was, I was like 13, 14, I played basketball in Dearborn for the D1 Dads League. And it was me and a Hispanic kid. We were the leaders of the team. And so he was injured for like two weeks. And we lost for like two weeks. Like we were, we were like all five for like the next two weeks. So they started giving me more playing time. And uh, <clears throat> like through three or four games, 
I'm putting up 24, 25 consistently. They're like, okay, you are ace, you are go-to. So when I started making music, I kept that name because it was like it was a genuine name that somebody gave me. Mm -hmm. So after a while, I started noticing everybody had that name. So I'm like, okay, me and me and my cousin Fresh, we were in the studio one day, and like, let's let's add to your name, make it make it something different. So how Suge is spelled, you can't tell with the um, what's what's gonna call it, uh, the silent H. How his is spelled, we wanted to do it the same way. It's where it added something different. I thought it was cool. All right, good job. So, last or this year, 2019, you dropped a couple of projects to Apple Music. Can you kind of like explain your reason or the theme behind the titles of your projects? Like, with love, still love, do better, and what's the rush? You kind of explain like why you named them that and kind of like what the theme behind the project is. Uh, let's see. So, the first CD was What's the Rush. It's pretty self-explanatory. I feel obligated to, like, I have really bad anxiety. So it's like, I see all my friends doing what they're supposed to, and like, they're advancing. And I feel like I wouldn't. I'm like, okay, I gotta do this now. Otherwise, I'm gonna get left. So it just, it grew like, I feel like I was gonna be left out. So I'm like, I just gotta drop, 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 now, now, now. And then, that's when I started learning the, the that patience is a real virtue. So it's like, what's the rush is a story about, it's really about trusting your process and going with the flow. It's like success has no timetable boundary. Like anybody can do anything they want at any age. Like <clears throat> you're not guaranteed success at 27. You're not guaranteed success at 35. So it's like, as long as you stay down with your process then What's the rush for real? Cause it's like you're doing what you should be at your own pace. Right. It's not a race to the finish line. Just whoever get there, get there. And then let's see. Still loving with love. Um, it's it's pretty much life lessons about who not to deal with and who to deal with. You see through a lot of uh, when you when you going through your process, you see through a lot of fake. And me, I'm only twenty. I think I'm twenty five. I should be 26 in February. <laughs> um, it's like, I've had a lot of friendships, I've had a lot of relationships to where it's like, it didn't pan out. Some mistakes were on me, some mistakes were on them, I admit to that. But it's like, you gotta learn who you can and can't be around. Cause it's, it's vital to your process. Like, I keep saying the process cause everybody has a process. So it's like, you gotta learn who to cut off, when and how to do it. Which brings me into do better. It's like now I'm in a place to where it's like, all right, if it ain't right, don't include me. Cause it's like now I just wanna, I just wanna advance properly. And if you can't be around, all right, cool, you gone. If she can't be around, she gone. If he with it, come on, you on board. As long as you, as long as you stand down and stay loyal. So it's, it's just about doing better and. Uh, making the proper moves for advancement. So basically you would say that your life experiences contribute a lot to your music and your, the process in, behind making your music? Mm -hmm. Making a lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes. I make a lot of mistakes. I still make them every day. Everybody do. But it's about accepting your mistakes and learning that that's a part of your story that you have to use to get to your success. Alright. Um, would you say that growing up, that there were any musical influences that helped um, kind of like craft your style or like the type of music that you wanted to make, whether it be a hip hop artist or any artist really? Um, I listened to a lot of Mac Miller growing up. Like before I graduated high school, I was on like a real Mac Miller wave, like on a, a song called Donald Trump. I saw how he looked. And I liked his image and I liked his music. Mm -hmm. So I started looking up to him. So it's like I was wearing khakis, I was wearing the Jordans, I was wearing the jerseys, the, the do-rag on and everything with the hats. So it's like, Mac Miller influenced me a little bit, may he rest in peace. Um, let's see, I listen to a lot of T.I., a lot of Jeezy, just like off, off the business aspect, because it's like I like how they operate. 
Um, let's see who else. T.I., Jeezy, Mac Miller, um, John Legend, uh, Ryan Leslie, especially Ryan Leslie. He's still great. I'm so glad he's a gem. Mm -hmm. He doesn't tell me anymore. And I love it. Um, and just pe people of that sort with the with the right mindset who enjoy music for what it is. Uh, so you recently released a project, uh, Gumbo, a collab project with 313 Fresh. Can you kind of talk about that a little bit and what inspired it? Um, Gumbo, really, the, the concept is about, I think, six different people that's involved with the project. Uh, myself, Fresh, True Speech, Dank, k Hamp, SP. Um, we're all related. We're all related through blood. Um, pretty much we just came together and we just, for one weekend, we locked in and really operated off each other's styles. So it's like Gumbo is a, is a pot of stew. So it's like different herbs, spices, meats, all that. Mm -hmm. So it's like everybody brought their different style to make different types of songs. Mm -hmm. So it's like with that, we were we were really able to vibe the whole weekend. So we just put out a, a decent body of work. So it only took a weekend to create the project. Mm -hmm. um, so I noticed on your Apple Music or going through your projects, Aside from the collab project with 313 Fresh, I didn't really see any features on your projects. Do you do features or is that not really your style? It depends on if I'm rocking with you. If if you locked in, then it's like, you're going to be there. If not, then I really can't tell you that I can work with you. Because it's like, I don't need anybody to do features with. Because it's like, if, if, I, if I do want a feature, it's because I feel like you fit this part of the story. Mm -hmm. If not, then... It's just literally on me, cause it's like there's nobody better to tell your story than you. So it's like that's why I don't do a lot of features. Plus, I don't like people. So you don't like, like you don't like people. No. All right. What is your favorite project or favorite song that you've done thus far? Favorite song. Um, I say my favorite song is between Priceless and You. Why? Can you kind of explain like those songs? Priceless is, it's, it's a song about how, nope, I gotta take it back. I gotta take it back, that's not my favorite song. My favorite song is, I got three. It's Crooked Smile, You, and, man, uh, let's see. Crooked Smile, You, and No Lies. Or lies, we call it lies. Okay. And Crooked Smile is number one because it's like when I started making like the 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 vision of how I want to do better to sound, it's like Crooked Smile is pretty much about it can go either way for like men and women because everybody feels this way. Um, everybody's insecure, I feel. So it's, it's like they don't like they smile, they don't like their skin tone, they don't like their hair. I like don't like the texture they hear. They don't like how they look in certain clothes. So it's like, I felt it was important for me to, to let people know. It's like, everybody goes through that. But it's, it's all right to accept your flaws. Because if you don't, then you're going to live a life of you being fake, per se. Because it's like, now you're not accepting who, who God made you as, who your parents made you as. So it's like, if you do that, then it sets you up for failure. Um, and for you, it's just a bop. <laughs> <laughs> what like, is it about? It's it's a whole it's it's a vibe. It's about um, it's about my last relationship that obviously ended. Um, it's just how I felt in the moment of the relationship. Like we went we went through our our ups and downs, more downs than ups. Uh, we're cool now. I like we talk every day. So what happened in the relationship? Why did it end? Wasn't in the right place mentally. I would at least. To where it's like I, I understand it now. Yeah, it, it, this is a whole bop. Like the it, it feels it like again? you, you like it's make it's, sure y'all check that out. It's a it's like a summary type of vibe to where it's like you feel like you listen to something where he got his shirt open and he just driving down the freeway, uh, sunroof down, shirt open, hair in the wind. It's it's that type of vibe. Um, and the third one was I think I said lies. I think that's when I started realizing that people were full of it.
to where it's like, all right, now I got to adjust my, my path and now I got to adjust my way of thinking. So it, it pushed me to where I am now, for real, mentally. What do you want your message to be? Um, really, it's, you have to, you have to believe in what you are. Like everybody is a something. So it's like, I, I stay lost for like a good, I say lost for a good 22 years, like on what I wanted to do, who I was, how I wanted to dress, all that. So it's like, now I don't even care. Not not caring as in like, oh, it's whatever. Right. No, I, don't, I don't care what people look at me as. It's like, as long as you're happy with what you're doing, then you're in the right place. So it's like, I just want to be myself at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And I want to be remembered as somebody who, who stayed down to their self and who figured it out by becoming themselves the best image. You have a song on With Love entitled Center. Can you kind of explain the meaning behind that song and how it came to be? Let's see, Center, Center, Center. Pretty much, um, Center is it's, it's about our take on, on religions and churches and how they pretty much, they try to force religion on people. It's like religion is important, but it's like everybody got their own beliefs to a certain extent. So it's like I cannot go to church and still believe in Jesus, or I can, or whatever you believe in. Like everybody don't believe in Jesus. So are you speaking like, on you personally, or are you saying like people in general? I, I spoke on me personally. It's like I don't go to church for specific reasons. Like, so do you believe? Are you more of a spiritual person than you are in specifically believing in religion? Yes, I, I believe in like. Like, I believe in karma and everything. Like, I just don't believe in, you have to go to church and you have to believe in one certain thing in order to go to heaven or whatever you want to feel about it. Because it's like, there's a reason why there's like 10 different gods. It's like, it's just a matter of who you pray to or not. So it's like, on top of that, I feel like most people who go to churches, they're the most fake people. Because it's like, the church I went to growing up, I went to church from like the ages of 12 to probably like 17. And like it was nothing but gossip. So it's like our church had a, a sister church. So it's like when we go there. It was a what church? Sister church. Okay. So it's like they affiliated. So it's like even when we went there, it's like it's still people who gossip. So it's like I feel like just because you go to church don't make you right or wrong. But the people who are in the church are the most wrong. The most wrong, yeah. or because it's like they don't take it. So they don't take it serious. So it's like I know pastors and evangelists who who gossip often. Like they be on the book gossiping. Like they they add me on Facebook, and it's like I don't know the add people on Facebook. So I'll be on Facebook, but it's like they don't do nothing but gossip. Share like. It's like religious articles and stuff like that. It's like he gave us free will for a reason. And at the end of the day, if you live and let your free will, you're really going by what he wanted. Okay. He wanted us to live at free will, so it's like, I'm doing whatever I want. So you're saying anybody can do whatever they want? Yeah, as long as it's not like, as long as it's not compromising your morals or really, or really going against like, Humanity, like killing animals, killing people, killing babies, all that, stealing. That's unnecessary shit. So what exactly are your Stuff. core values as a person? What do you truly believe in? To this point right now, the only thing I believe in is honesty and loyalty. Because like those are, those are the two most important moral values you have. Because we live in a day and age where love, loyalty, and honesty is just a word. All right. It's like I've been around people where it's like they tell you one thing and then they have a text message conversation about a whole nother thing behind your back. Facts. And I, I've been there and I've been on both sides. So it's like really if I can't trust you and I know you can't be honest, I feel vibes. Like I'm sure everybody can, mm -hmm. but it's like I'm in tune with myself to a point where it's like I feel if I feel the slightest energy off. I know something's wrong. And if like if I ask you about it, I'm like, oh, nothing's wrong, da da da, and you continue to act funny, then it's like, okay, you're intruding on what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. So earlier you were talking about how you 
suffer basically from social anxiety. Can you talk about how you kind of like cope with that and overcome that? I don't. You like don't. I, know, I know I said it before, but I, I don't cope with it. Like, and I'm I'm not saying I don't cope with it. Like I don't I don't know how to deal with it. But it's like when I'm in public, like it I be I just be want to be left alone. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if we're at a public event, I make sure my back is to the very, very back of the wall. So I know can't nobody come behind me try to talk to me or I, I'm, I'm a really silent person. So it's like, I have trouble coming out that shell. And it's like, when there's too many people in the room, I feel obligated to leave. Cause it's like, 90% of the people in the room, I probably don't know. Unless it's a rare occasion, like it's a party or something like that. So it's like, I try to make it better by like par participating in like drinking, smoking, or not. Cause that's just stuff I, I engage in. But other than that, I don't really have a couple of things. So when you're like performing on stage and like you see all those people in the crowd, you don't get any anxiety from that or like, how does that work? Performing wise, not anymore. I used to, when I was like 17, 18, 19, it was like, I perform like in a box like this for real. and it's like because it's like just the the sense of being nervous and the sense of not being accepted it's like everybody want to be accepted but it's like now I feel like if you don't accept me for what I present then you're just not meant to be so what do you think helped you overcome that how did you get to this place where you're able to just perform freely versus when you were in the shell just not caring and not caring like I'm not gonna say that in a bad way, but just like being able to accept that some people like you, some people won't. It's like the people who are meant to like you, they can like you off the strength that you're presenting you, and whoever don't, they just not for you for real. Like they're not meant to be around. Right, now we're gonna get into the speed round of questions for Ace Boogie, and we just gonna see like who he really is and what he likes. So it's ten questions. First question, what's your favorite sport? Favorite sport, baseball. Favorite artist? Favorite artist right now is still Ryan Leslie. Favorite food? Favorite food, favorite food, favorite food. Taco Tuesday on Thursday. Taco Tuesday on Thursday. Shout out to Kennedy. Who is your celeb collab goal? I need some ad libs from Black. That's all I want. Black? Mm -hmm. That's all you want. That's all I want. No, actually, I lied, bro. I lied. I need a verse from Kaylani. Baylani. Man. Boy. Do you smoke or drink? I do both. But I'd rather smoke. Why, did, why would you rather smoke? I don't throw up from smoking. After you throw up from drinking, it's <laughs> like, whatever you drinking that night, it's like, shit, you never gonna touch it again. <laughs> what is the ultimate goal in the end? The ultimate goal is to pretty much... Like, I've always wanted to open a, um, a recreation center. It's like growing up, I didn't have the opportunity to put my time into something. Like, how these kids got the opportunity to go to local lessons, like basketball camps. I want, I want my influence to lead the money to be able to open a recreation center to where they have something to do. It's like, we don't have those. Like, they close in the music programs. They, they close in, like the parks and stuff like that. And it's like, I don't want to see that. So you want to open a space for younger kids yeah. and younger generations so that they could be safe and feel right. free to create. Right, right. Cause like I got a lot of younger nephews, not nephews, like cousins to where it's like, I would want them to invest their safety and their time in something worthwhile. Right. You keep doing this a lot. What is that about? Like, that's, that's my thing, man. That's I'm your thing? About, I'm all about peace. Is that what that really I'm all means? About, I'm here. Why do you have two phones? Well, one, this is the one where people get like the the number to it. It's like, I don't answer. I answer this phone. So if you're on this phone, I fuck with you. Why you don't answer this phone? The red phone. I don't fuck with you the long way. If you're in the red phone, you're in the red. What is your favorite sweet to eat? My favorite sweet to eat? I like brownies, bro. Like, I, I go to Qdoba and I spend like $12 on brownies. What is your favorite place to travel? Favorite place? Uh, 
between Las Vegas and Toronto. I'm going to choose Las Vegas because the last time I went to Vegas for my birthday, I was fried. I don't know how to get home. How do you identify yourself racially? I identify as mixed. It's like, but my, my 90% of my family is black. Like, I got white family out on the East Coast, like Connecticut and New England and all that. But it's like, I identify as black. But some people don't know how to take me until like I have a conversation with them. For sure. So like, they'll look at me for like two weeks, not saying nothing. And then they're like, what are you? And then once once two they weeks. hear my voice, they're like, okay, you black for real. So it's like, I, I identify as a... Uh, I mix with my family's life. Alright, y'all. Thanks for tuning in to the Big Chair with Blair. It's your host, Blair Moon, with Ace Boogie in the building, sitting in the big chair with Blair. You can find me on all social medias at Ace B U G E Y. I don't have Facebook, only Instagram. Tap in with me. Do you have any upcoming performances or anything they can catch you at? Nah, but they can catch this music. Apple Music, Spotify, Title, everything, Ace Boogie, B U G U Y. You work on any current projects? Current projects, who knows, you know? Who knows? I'm working I'm working every day. Just an in the moment thing. Trying to keep things busy. For sure. Thank you. Definitely. Blair. Big Chair with Blair, episode one, season one. Stay tuned. We coming even harder, episode two. <laughs> one more time. One more time. <laughs> We gonna have a good ass blooper reel, you know? No. Short tempered, but you well mannered. Live above the standards, look. You the face of independence, trying to boss up. Get up on your level, baby, back that up. Let's back it up. I'm trying to lock it down for life. You give me shivers every time we touch I pipe it down, you hype it up You ride it down, can't get enough You the sugar, honey, iced tea Never met a woman like you You see the love in my smile It's hard to crack without you Love conquers all if it's real From hell and back, over time it heals It don't fade if it's meant to be Just watch and see Look, baby, you can watch and see Pull up my eye.